Hello, my name's Rachel Gadsden, and I'm a visual and performance artist and disability culture activist. I am very lucky and I exhibit and perform my work nationally and internationally. Expressionist in approach, I create solo exhibitions, performances, collaborative social engagement art projects with disabled, vulnerable and mainstream individuals and communities across the globe through drawing, painting, performance and digital film, mostly with the object of developing cross-cultural dialogues considering universal notions of humanity. As an artist, I employ all of my body and my bodily processes to express fragility and mortality. My body is central to my narrative and I often incorporate it full size and combined within my work as an integral action and material. More generally, a key feature is to consider the extent to which notions of the conditions of confinement, constriction and sensation influence the disabled artist's process. My art is represented in UK and international art collections, including His Majesty the Queen King's Royal Collection, UK Parliament, Mandela's Walk to Freedom, the Federation International Football Association Switzerland, and many others. I've been lucky to have received many commissions for Paralympic Games, and these include Beijing, London, Sochi, Brazil, and Tokyo. And I have undertaken four commissions for the UK Parliament. In 2016, I was awarded an honorary doc doctorate from, from London South Bank University. And in July 2021, I gained a studentship to undertake a PhD doctoral research by practice at Loughborough University. So now you know a little bit about me. I'm also a passionate drawer. For me, drawing is all about being able to have the easiest way to express who you are. You just pick up a pencil, have a piece of paper or a piece of chalk and go. I believe in being drawing fit. You get really good if you draw regularly. It sort of activates a part of your creative mind that just starts flowing. And a bit like an athlete, if you don't do it often enough, you have to really pull and stretch to make sure that you can achieve what you want to achieve. And I'm also a very proud trustee of the big draw and help to, I suppose, share with our amazing team, the director and the team at the big draw to try and find how we can embrace every aspect of drawing and make it the creative, inspirational language that it is. I'm terribly excited about this year's festival theme drawing with senses. And I, I suspect the reason I am so pleased about this is that I live with disability and I'm also visually impaired. And so notions of the senses are a fundamental part of my daily lived experience as a disabled person, but they also emerge with bodily force in my paintings and drawings and performative active practice too. So, when I heard that it was the senses that were being, going to be addressed this year, I just began to think about all the amazing things that people who will be part of the Big Draw Festival would be able to think about. And I think that this year's drawing theme offers so many options to explore the phenomenology of the body. All those sorts of sensations and feelings that we have when we want to make art and to possibly ask questions about how and where our drawings emerge. Through the process of losing a lot of my sight, I began to realize really quickly that all these years I've been drawing, that it really didn't have an awful lot to do with what I saw through my eyes. And that actually, what I actually draw is from somewhere else. Of course, there's many challenges about living with visual impairment, and I won't underestimate them. 
And I know for anybody else who suffers from visual impairment, there are challenges. But coming to terms with my visual impairment has also made me understand in a far greater way through this ideology that what I draw and what I see doesn't come from my eyes. It comes from a greater vision. And for that reason, I believe that this year's big draw theme should encourage really a flamboyant experimentation where the whole gamut of our human condition and our emotions will emerge through any resulting artworks or installations that people choose to create. I'm often asked, you know, where, where, why do I make the work I make? You know, I focus on humanity, mortality, and those different connections about being human. And I think my physical challenges have sparked my interest in interdisciplinary processes to enable a far greater sense of humanity to be evident within my work. You know, possibly if I hadn't been born with a medical condition, I might, might not have been so concerned with the universality of the human condition, but I am. I understand what it means to survive. And I've always wanted to broaden my own personal experience into a much more universal voice. And this involves working often with different uh, professional practitioners within my work. I work with composers and choreographers, but I also work as a socially engaged artist where everyone involved has the opportunity to express their voice through creativity. These different collaborations have helped me understand far more about the world. They've taken what might have been a very insular practice because of my personal circumstances to a broader sense of being. And I've had the opportunity to work in collaboration with economic and politically vulnerable communities across the globe, where war and social deprivation challenges individuals to have a voice within their society. They don't have a voice, often because of their circumstances. But art can break down and give opportunity and break these barriers and can promote a sense of personal agency which is empowering and ultimately does bring cultural change. I've recently decided to go back into a research environment. Research has always been a really critical part of my practice. Although often I work in a very expressionistic way, there's always a lot of research goes into the projects I work on. If I go to a country or I work with a different group of people that I know nothing about, I have to go and do a lot of research before I can even start engaging. Anyway, I'm now back in a research environment and I've been exploring the representation of modern and contemporary disability art, mortality and activism with the particular interest to explore how disability does bring agency to the artist's disabled artist practice. I do think it's my personal life experience that means that I reach out to the different subjects that I do. I care about vulnerability. I care about survival. And I also care hugely about human rights because without human rights, we can't actually engage within society. And if those human rights don't exist for some people, that means that they don't have a voice. And we actually all have to have a voice to make a functioning society, because if you ignore some of those people, then what is the society that's there? It isn't everyone. As a professional artist, art for me is really my life. And it's quite tricky to try and express what that means, but there's been many times when I haven't actually been able to function in a large way with the outer world. But one thing I've always been able to do is to make work. And I suppose with my motivations around issues of the human condition and human rights, 
I've been very lucky to use my platform as an artist who through the circumstances that have come to me to have the opportunity to highlight the disparities of our world. And as we know at the moment, there's huge trauma happening across the globe. And I think it's really important that through art, we reach out together and create work that tells stories, that expresses who we are and finds a way for each of our voices to be there and to be heard. I'm often asked, you know, well, how did you get into being an artist? Well, actually, I knew nothing about art for many, many years. I grew up in the Middle East and I had the opportunity um, to experience lots of things, but no art. And as a result, I think it was my imagination that brought me to art. And I was always trying to create things, not really knowing that there was such a thing as even being an artist. I didn't know about galleries or people being artists. I knew if you drew, but I didn't know that there was a role as, a, as an artist. When I was about 18, I went off to drama school because I liked acting as well. And I became an actress and I toured in performances. But ultimately, my lung condition, because I have a lung condition and find it very difficult to breathe, it sort of meant that being a touring actress was very challenging indeed. And as a result, visual art became my creative language. And it wasn't until I was 30 that I embarked on a fine art degree. I think it was probably quite a good thing because it sort of meant that I brought my life experience to the art that I was making. With my current work um, and explorations um, in relation to also my PhD, I've been looking very closely at uh, Francis Bacon's work. My, create, my sort of creation within the PhD is focusing on issues of mortality and confinement and constriction and the space that our bodies actually inhibit, uh, inhabit. And it was, I think when I was about 18, I went off to uh, the Tate uh, Britain exhibition for the first time. I think that was the first gallery I ever really went to. And I was looking at Bacon's artwork and I was absolutely convinced that this was also an artist that may not be able to breathe properly. I can't explain what that was because at the time I didn't really have that sort of understanding, but I could just feel something within the work. And then many years later, uh, I was listening to the radio in about 2020 and I heard Sophie Pretorius talking about uh, Francis Bacon's work. She's the archivist at the Francis Bacon estate. And I knew that some medical notes had been donated, Bacon's medical notes had been donated to the archive. And it became really evident um, through listening to this talk that probably Bacon did have the same medical condition as me. And so I went off um, on a, another research trip, um, looking at lots of books and got in touch with um, uh, the Francis Bacon estate. And that really became the basis of where my research started. And to really look at why it's important to draw upon your life experiences to create your work. And it's been a very fascinating uh, journey and I've had huge support which I'm very grateful for from the uh, Francis Bacon estate. My work having sort of gone from being very performative as an actress and then becoming purely visual art has sort of gone full circle and I'm once again creating work that really is performative. I don't think of it as a performance like an acting performance but I think when I started to lose my sight, I was really aware of the fact that, well, how was the work going to emerge? And I'd always drawn constantly from life, but obviously I didn't see in the same way that I used to see. So I began to use my body as my own life figure 
So as I was drawing the figure, I would actually be sort of feeling through my own body to understand what was going onto the canvas and what shapes needed to go onto the canvas. And as I say, it's very strange that despite the fact that I do have um, quite a chronic breathing condition, and I'm injected every minute to support my breathing. My work is really physical and it's evident in my work if you look at it. And I think what I'm trying to capture is the sense of surviving and being alive. And I know that Bo Bacon often talked um, about his work and people said that he was just focusing on you know, mortality and death. And he said that he wasn't. What he was focusing on was about being alive because of course, the only time we stop and there's no movement is when we're no longer alive. And he was all interested in sensation. And I think through my current work or all of my work, I suspect I'm attempting to create a sense of human sensations within my art. And that's really what this whole festival is going to be about. We're using all our senses to create work, to draw our own thoughts of who we are as individuals within this world into some form of drawing or installation that gives a sense, the sensations of what it means to be human. Obviously, Bacon's a massive influence in my work, but there are others too. I've always loved Michelangelo's late crucifixion drawings. In fact, whenever I see them, they're tiny drawings and they, they fill me with the deepest of emotion. They really do give a sense of what it is to have been alive and then be at the end of your life. I'm also very interested in Goya's dark period, not because I'm interested in, in you know, negative, dark subjects, but I suppose once you've been resuscitated many times, you know what you can survive and how you stay alive. But you're also aware of the challenges of life. So I suppose that's what's made me like Goya's dark period. I'm very influenced by Frida Kahlo. She was the real first disability activist champion who made incredible work despite her physical disabilities and difficulties. Um, and more recently, I've been looking at Carolee Schneeman's work and Rebecca Horn's practices. And I greatly relate to Martin O'Brien's performance art. Martin's recently been appointed the current artist in resident to the Whitechapel Gallery and is going to be doing some extraordinary work this year. Uh, so please look out for anything that he's doing. But I'm influenced by many things. I really do love um, theatre still, film and dance, and they're all in my work somewhere. Finally, I suppose one of the things that I'd like to maybe highlight as a disability culture activist, that art should be for everyone. We know art is for everyone, of course, that goes without saying, but we have to make places accessible for people to be able to be part of that. And if you are visually impaired, you might not necessarily believe it's possible to draw, but of course it is. So I hope that with the festival and with all the events that are planned, that we make things accessible for everyone so that everyone can be there and everyone can actually take part. And it's not a huge shift. I've experienced how young creators also need role models. And if there are mainstream and diverse role models that are part of the events or part of the art that's being created, an inclusive environment of art making can actually exist because young people are inspired to be able to follow in the footsteps of the individuals who might also have similar diversity issues that they have. That's why we all love Frida Kahlo. She's made it possible for all the disabled artists out there in the world to really understand it's possible to make work. So you do have to find out about access and how people can be supported. 
for me, access support to enable everyone to take part is a human right. And so it's a fundamental factor that always needs to be in place. I really hope that as you start planning your amazing events that will be happening in the next uh, year to do with the senses, that you be amb ambitious, that you think of every possible way that you could create the art. Because of course, art's really got nothing to do with what we see with our eyes. Our vision is huge. And so we need to make sure we draw upon everything to create that vision.